a frost came in the night and stole my world and left this changeling for it, a precocious image of spring, too brilliant to be true. White lilac and the window pane, each grass blade furred like a catkin, may drift loading the hedge. The elms behind the house are elms no longer, but blossomers in crystal, stems of the mist that hangs yet in the valley below, amorphous as the blind tissue whence creation formed. The sun looks out, and the fields blaze with diamonds. Mockery spring, to lend this bridal gear for a few hours to a raw country maid. Then, Leave her all disconsolate with old fairings of aconite and snowdrop. No, not here amidst this founts and filigree of death is the real transformation seen in progress. But deep below where frost, worrying the stiff clods, unclenches their grip on the seed and lets the future breathe. A hard frost. The imagery of the poem is enhanced by the sound devices. In this poem, look out for the S, T, and ST sounds, which highlight the word frost. These sounds suggest the icy, crystal, clear morning. So with the T sound, you'll have words like night, left, it, brilliant, true. Precocious, spring, grass blades, elms, blossomers, show off the S sound. And the st sound, ST, is highlighted through words such as frost, crystal, Stems, mist, and stole. Themes in a hard frost. Theme of deception or illusion. Something that appears to be something that it's not. For a while, temporarily, the frost transforms and beautifies the poet's garden and the countryside behind his property, creating an illusion of spring flowers, like lilacs and catkins and mayflowers. But this is just for a short while. While the sun shines on the frosted fields and the garden transforms the scene to a wedding wonderland. But soon, the heat of the sun will melt the frost and the reality of the stark winter garden and countryside will be seen once more. So words that highlight the theme of deception include changeling, image, too brilliant to be true and mockery. The idea of the wedding is through words such as bridal, maid, diamonds, flounds and filigree, fairings and white. Another theme in A Hard Frost is that of real transformation, what is really taking place. Instead of the illusion, the image of a wedding and springtime flowers that you can see on the surface, the frost is actually working 
underground to promote real transformation, both of the poet's garden and the countryside, from winter to spring. The frost is loosening the soil that was frozen so that the seeds underground can start to grow once more and cover the landscape, cover the garden and the countryside with real flowers and real greenery. The third theme is from death to new life. While the winter scene is that of death, The beauty of the frost is only covering the dead plants and the lifeless trees. When you look at it, it looks beautiful on the surface. But the reality is that the frost is helping to promote new growth. It's helping to bring forth a new life under the ground. And this will only show once it is really springtime. In stanza one, lines two to three, a precocious image of spring, too brilliant to be true. The changeling, left by the mischievous frost, was like a baby that has developed strangely fast, as if the fairies came in during the night, took a real baby away and exchanged it for another baby. This extended metaphor of the image of spring and the changeling it refers to a spring that is not yet due. The way that the frost creates patterns and decorates the plants make it seem like spring has arrived early. The garden is personified as a changeling, like a baby that was swapped. The word image suggests that the appearances are deceptive that this is not the real spring. In stanza one, line seven to nine, the mist that hangs yet in the valley below, amorphous as the blind tissue whence creation formed. The shapeless mist reminds the poet of the beginning of creation before things were formed and shaped. The words blind tissue suggest an unborn child whose eyes are closed in his mother's womb. The new life in the scene is hidden from our eyes because the frost is working underground to release new life, just as a baby that is being born is hidden in his mother's tummy. We, we cannot see the baby until the baby is actually born. Just a side note about the mist before the beginning of creation and things being formed and shaped. But that is a, a personal life view and a religious philosophy about how things formed. <clears throat> this idea of creation and how it was formed will vary on an individual basis based on your life philosophy as well as your religious beliefs. So this is one view. In line seven to nine, the mist that hangs yet in the valley below, amorphous as the blind tissue whence creation formed. 
The shapeless mist reminds the poet of the beginning of creation, before things were formed and shaped. The words blind tissue suggest an unborn child whose eyes are closed in his mother's womb. The new life in the scene is actually hidden from our eyes because the frost is working underground to release new life. So it's hidden from our view. Just as a baby that has been formed in his mother's womb, we cannot see that. We are aware that something is happening. We cannot see it until it actually manifests. Stanza two, lines two to five. Mockery spring to lend this bridal gear for a few hours to a raw country maid. Then leave her all disconsolate with old fairies of aconite and snowdrop. The frost is personified here as a trickster who lends a magnificent wedding dress to a simple country girl, only to take it back within a few hours. One can picture the broken-hearted countryside, which has to make do with old accessories, aconite and snowdrop, instead of the diamonds and crystal that the poet sees when he looks out at the garden that morning. In stanza two, lines five to seven. No, not here amidst this flounce and filigree of death is the real transformation seen in progress. No, not here is the real transformation seen in progress. It shows a dramatic change in the appearance of the garden and the countryside is not really a genuine change from winter to spring. The words flounce and filigree suggest an ornate wedding dress with wide frills and exquisite embroidery. However, the tone is ironic because a wedding celebrates life and the hope of babies to be born. Although this is an exceptionally beautiful um, ornate wedding dress or appears to be like that, the frost is actually damaging the plants it's covering, bringing death, not life. Stanza two, lines eight to 10. But deep below where frost warring the stiff clods unclenches their grip on the seed and lets the future breathe. Once more, the frost is personified, but now as a dog warring a bone. The frost is seen as struggling to release the seeds that have been captured by the, the stiff earth. This, declares the poet, is where the real transformation is taking place, as humble and ignored as a dog chewing a bone. Stanza 3, lines 